the biggest thing that comes to top of mind is customer service. Of course, that's huge, uh, especially in the industry we're living in right now, and open communication. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Mopnikolov, and we've got an awesome show lined up for you today. We are really excited to welcome Mackenzie Broughton. She's the Vice President of Communications for Epic Companies, and Epic Companies is, I'm just going to say it, doing some really epic things. Sorry. Beth's been thinking about that all day. <laughs> I have. I have. It was locked and loaded. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> So first of all, Mackenzie, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for asking me to be on. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And for our listeners who may not know, can you give us the 30,000 foot view of Epic Companies and your role there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'll try to fit a a lot into a little bit of time here, but uh, Epic Companies, we're based out of West Fargo, North Dakota, actually, and we are a regional development company. And the unique thing about us is that we do investment, development, and management. Our main focus is building mixed-use properties, but in turn, we try to enhance communities through innovative development. That's our big thing. So we don't just want to put up another multifamily building. We look to see what's unique for that community and what could be a good fit. So whether that's doing a concept right now that we're working on, which is like a hotel water park, it'd be North Dakota's largest indoor water park in the whole... Uh, I guess regionally, it would really reflect on that then because it's the the state's largest, but then it would kind of attract uh, regional people. But, you know, I kind of overuse, I guess, the live, work and play thing. But that's something that we really strive to do when people move into our buildings. We want them to have the plaza space outside, such as we built at the lights in West Fargo. And just being able to have the ability and the options to kind of be able to move into a place, call it home, but also you can bring your families there, you can invite people there. And there's so much more than just being an apartment or a place that you live. So I think that's really been uh, a big part about what Epic does. And over the last few years, Epic's grown quite a bit. Uh, When I started, there was about three people in 2017. And now we have over 80 employees. Wow. So what I kind of like to say is we kind of figured out like where where we need help and what we need to, people need to quit wearing so many hats and we need some experts in these areas. We've started a construction division. We brought on architects. We have a leasing, commercial leasing, residential leasing, a capital team, an accounting team. So we really kind of dove into what our niche is and where we need help and what can work for us. And I think that's been a huge part of our growing and can't say there's not been growing pains along the way, uh, but just a huge part of kind of understanding what's needed and where we're going next with everything. So yeah, that's kind of a, a high level rundown of that Epic is, That a was whole. a lot in a little um, bit. I you guess, said that's what you're going to do yes. and you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a lot, but it, it's a good lot, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> a little bit about my backstory. I grew up in a small town farming community in uh, northern North Dakota, so about five hours from Fargo. So I was always kind of interested in agriculture and that type of thing. Went on to college, realized maybe more marketing, communication was my niche. Uh, Decided to get a job in the agriculture industry after college. Uh, Wasn't quite the best fit for me, but kind of kept exploring options and then ended up getting my master's in communications. Started with Epic and the next thing you know, I could tell it was a very growing company, but we were more so just a leasing company at that time. And now we've kind of evolved into this larger company with a lot of different roles. And my PR communication side has definitely been used quite a bit in the last uh, few years. So it's been nice to be able to uh, utilize that and kind of see where my niches are. Very cool. So you, you're probably at the forefront of what's happening from a development standpoint. I'm curious to hear, you know, as you all have gone through the pandemic, and it sounds like you're doing some really creative stuff in reference to, gosh, having a a water park inside. Uh, is it is it mixed use? Is it multifamily? Is it inside? Is it, can you elaborate on that a little bit? So uh, primarily, what we try to stick with is the mixed use concept. So we created a development called Yolo by Epic, and this was actually a vacant lot that had had softball fields on it in the past. It got a little rundown. The Fargo Park District put it out for bid, and we decided to take a shot at it with some ideas that we had. And they were mixed use with a 
park plaza green space in the middle um, and just kind of having that option for the community there to be able to come hang out. It was connected to the baseball diamonds really close to the Red River Zoo here in town. And there's also a hockey rink, curling rink, hotels around it, some businesses, but it had kind of been a rundown area. So what could we do to also support those businesses around and encourage them to come utilize this space, but also build up the taxable value, bring something to the community, call it a regional destination location. And that's kind of where the water park concept came about, but it's also mixed use buildings around it. So the mixed use buildings have commercial apartments, condos, uh, we'll have a little like plaza space where there will be a small stage, some art, some sculptures. We're looking at doing a hockey or skating rink. So just really a family oriented, family friendly type place, I guess, that has a lot of different options for everyone, but also brings that big connectivity factor and brings in people from not only this community, but also hopefully regionally to want to come to the area, come to the water park, come to the skating rink, get a condo here, have a lake home, you know, kind of the the all around perfect thing that you could want, I guess, in a development world. Listening to this, I'm like, as a, if I'm a manufacturer, I'm like, wow, Mackenzie, this is really interesting. Um, how can I sell you my products is probably what they're thinking or how can I, you know, yeah, um, that's really cool. I'd like you to, to buy my products and use them in your projects. Um, but really what our manu- manufacturers want to know is how can I position more effectively, not just with an organization like yours, but the broader sense of developers. How do I sell and market mm-hmm. to developers in a way that gets them to listen and to want to use my products? And so I'm curious from your perspective, if you're, if I'm a manufacturer, mm-hmm. like what are the things that you're looking for from a manufacturer? What marketing and sales tactics work? Can you share a little about what you're looking for in that scenario? Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest thing that comes to top of mind is customer service. Of course, that's huge, uh, especially in the industry we're living in right now. And open communication, that's a big one. And just being very vulnerable and open. And if stuff's not arriving on time or if stuff's not gonna be here and we're gonna be missing some building timelines or whatever, we need to know, we need to know in advance. There's usually a solution to a problem. And it seems like a lot of times if we know about it and ahead of time, we can figure out some form of solution. And I tell you what, we have been very creative on multiple levels with that. But I think, you know, we work with so many great vendors and so many great people that come towards us and we try to stick a lot of things locally, but also nationwide. I mean, I get sign bids from all over the country because it's important that we stay competitive, too, and we make sure that we're offering the best. uh, We're taking the best price for with our investors, too, because all of our buildings are private investments. So we want to make sure we're doing what's best for them. But just making sure that those people, you know, check in with us and reach out and say, here's the timelines. Here's what's changed. Uh, those that help us solve those issues too. And those that are like, these are the issues that we've found and here's rising costs and different things, but here's a solution or here's something we think would be creative that we can think outside the box. So I think that's that's huge it, in follow through, of course. Those that follow through on their word, those that show up and they say they're gonna be there. Uh, it just makes you wanna use those people time and time again and you just know how important those relationships are with the vendors and the people that are selling you the products. Mackenzie, I'm interested what the process looks like to create something that's so tailored for the individual community. So you guys are doing a lot of maybe research and development to understand what needs to go into these mixed use buildings that can be really valuable to the community. It can't just be lack of because like nowhere has a water park. So there's got to be a more complex, (laughs) it's got to be a more complex process than just they don't have this thing. So let's build that thing. Can you give us a little bit of insight into that? Yeah, I I think uh, for us, you know, you can't just kind of come up with an idea and say, let's do it. Uh, You have to have the realist (laughs) as well as the idea person, Uh, which we have a lot of those on our team, too. And I I love the big ideas and I love kind of seeing them come to fruition. But we do have to check out checks and balances. I mean, what's going to work financially? We are responsible for a lot of different things Uh, we personally guarantee all of our buildings. We have investors that go into it. So we really have to be considerate of that. And we also want to be considerate of the rising costs of everything and evaluating each on its own merit, uh, checking out pricing on it, availability within the market and how we can make it work. But I think at the end of the day, so much of our creative things and things that we're bringing to the community, it's because we've seen, yes, it, it may not be here now and we've seen a little bit of a need for it or we've seen interest for it, but 
we also can't just do it because we're here. It's a great idea or, hey, you should try it. We really have to get down to the nuts and bolts. And I will say that our team has been very creative on the different ways that we can leverage uh, and finance different things, whether that's trying to work with the city and find out what opportunities there are for financing or working with different partnerships and trying to work together if it's the park district uh, in that local community. I think that's another thing that we do really well is it really comes down to being so relationship based, but also in order to make this work, it has to be a team buy-in. We don't want to be kind of standing up to the line just ourselves. We want it to be a team thing. We want to be working with those communities and making sure that they're on board. And that's really how we've how we've done a lot of these creative projects. And not all of them have came to fruition and not all of them have worked. But I'll tell you what, we've tried really hard <laughs> to make sure that we've basically went down every direction and every path before we can say that's not going to work or we're not going to see that here. Mackenzie, you said something there a second ago that I think is really important is that, you know, we try to do creative projects. And I think, you know, one thing I want to hear from you about is, you know, the last two years has changed for a lot of people the way they want to live life. And this trickles down to manufacturers specifically mm -hmm. because they need to create products that support that lifestyle for individuals, especially if they're you know, marketing to developers or to homeowners or the builder, whatever it might be, both residential and even commercial, right? And so I'm curious to get your take if you go macro with me for a moment. What are the things that you're hearing and you all know because you're building this for a large groups of people that individuals want a part of their lifestyle in the way that they live in a home or live in a space? How is that changing? You really still have to provide the uniqueness and the creativeness of what people want to, uh, especially getting into the condo world. We have to make sure that people are purchasing this. This is a mortgage. This is not a rental. Uh, it's going to be theirs once you turn over the keys. So although sometimes we are facing the supply chains and the concerns, I think the biggest thing is we have a lot of great people who are coming to the table with us with creative solutions that are going to help out in this challenging world that we're working through right now. Uh, they're saying, you know, you may have to give up this type of thing, but here's here's a deal. We'll make sure that you can get this for sure. Or, hey, we have a better idea. You can give us up and you can get this for similar costing. So I think it's it's very uh, a hard question in a sense because there is so many different things and you don't want to salvage that and you don't want to give that up uh, just because you know who your audience is. But the conversations with the market shortage are kind of they're being drove more and more on what's dictating with the solutions and what are those solutions. And sometimes we're not even getting from the vendors or people what maybe they would normally have pitched to us. And now they're just pitching us to here's what's available and here's what's going to work. We know you really like this idea, but hey, this is what we know can work. And this is what we know is going to work on your timeline. We recently even have had a project where we were, we're not going to get any of the electrical casing by the time frame that we're going to open the building, which is was this month. And it's kind of a, one of those things that's a little devastating at first, but we know we need to get the building open. We have people that are moving in. So it's like, okay, let's sit down. What options? We're going to come up with a temporary solution to get the CO for the next couple months until that gets here. And I think at the end of the day, that, that was like really a hope when you hear right away, you're just like, oh my gosh, this building's not going to be done in time to the next thing. Like, you know, we have a, we have a solution. Will you guys run with it and try it? It may not be perfect, but we're going to get the building open for you. As soon as the product comes in, we'll get everything switched out. Uh, so I think that's, that's kind of been huge for us. And I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it's definitely been a lot of that just relationships and making sure that we work together on figuring out what's next. Mackenzie, is there anything you feel like you've learned as the vice president of a communications? Because you're you would depend on manufacturers to communicate with you, but then you're doing a lot of the communications with the occupants for your buildings. And you know, based on the story you just shared, sometimes that's great news, and sometimes you're having to be the bearer of bad news too. So you can kind of understand where manufacturers are coming from. Anything you've learned about how to handle those not so fun? conversations or stories you could share about ways that that's gone? Yeah, I think a lot of different things are running through my head <laughs> right now as you ask that question. But uh, I think just reminding ourselves, especially if it's a, a mixed use building where we already have residential tenants moving in, it's their home. I mean, this is this is something that they have been amping up for, they've been waiting for. So whatever we can do to make sure that we're accommodating and you know what? It's not going to be done in time, but here's uh, another apartment you can move into for a short time. 
here, we'll help you move. We'll figure out a storage unit. We'll put you up in a hotel. We are so sorry. We'll do what we can, you know, whether that's even a free month of rent for the inconvenience. Uh, we've really learned that we have to bend over backwards in a sense to make sure that what we're doing uh, is not affecting them in the sense that they're getting stressed out because of something that's happening that we can't control either. You know, it really has to work two ways. And I think on the commercial side too, we've learned that too. We have a lot of commercial tenants who are fitting up their spaces and they're running into supply chain issues. And we're not even necessarily the ones maybe who are helping them fit up their spaces. Although we do have a team that does that. <laughs> but at times, you know, just making sure that we're we're being accommodating and working with them and, oh, you know, can our rent date start at a different time period because we're not going to have our space open. We're not going to be able to make the money. And just that's all goes back to the communication and being open. If someone is having an issue and we don't hear about it or don't know about it, it's hard to solve the problem. It's hard to fix it and come up with a creative idea. But I feel like at the end of the day, whatever we can do to communicate with them, talk them through, this isn't working, this isn't going to open. Uh, and just being a little transparent, I guess, is is a good word for it because we have people that the one thing about real estate, they can drive by and they can see the building every day. And if they think they're moving in on Friday and there's still work trucks out there and they're driving by and it's Thursday, there may be some questioning <laughs> there. So so just making sure that whatever we do, we uh, we make sure to let them know. That's great. That's great. Mackenzie, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I think we like to always ask our guests, you know, hey, like what's the one piece of advice you would give a manufacturer if they're trying to market and sell more effectively. You've got a really unique vantage point in that you're very close to the end user. What advice would you give a manufacturer with what you know about mm -hmm. your space? I have a couple of different uh, things going through my head. Uh, I guess one of the biggest things is complete the work. That's huge. Uh, if you say you're going to come back and finish it, please come back and finish it. That's, that's, you know, turned a lot of bridges for us and changes for us because in, in turn, if we don't have the manufacturer or the contractor come back and install the product correctly, it kind of falls onto our maintenance team. It makes the tenant's life a little bit harder. It just, it really is a trickle effect. And I think that's been really hard for everyone, I guess, in a sense, just to make sure that we, you want people to move into a, a finished product and not have any lingering issues. Um, and then I always kind of think, you know, just this goes back to the relationship and the communication side, but as a manufacturer, you know, be competitive too. be competitive with your bids. Uh, try to keep an open mind about what's going to work. If you hear a no, you know, say, let me relook at it. There's usually solutions. And sometimes it, it's not always the best pricing that you go with. It is the person that has been in talks with you. It's the person that picks up the phone. It's a person that gets to know you. Uh, so that that's been huge too. So just make sure that you're competitive, you're communicating, uh, completing the work, talking about timelines and deadlines and getting there. I think for myself, I handle a lot of the, the signage and we've been put push behind a lot with that uh, and just making sure that with that, you know, it, it's it's OK to get pushed behind. But in the meantime, what are you doing? Are you making sure that all the electrical is done so when the product arrives, it can just literally be plugged in and here it is, it turns on. Uh, so just kind of keeping that in mind as well, like following all the solutions and the steps to make sure that if something is delayed or something is happening, that you're going to make it easy end game for them when it does show That's up. That's great. Mackenzie, this has been awesome. For our listeners, if they want to connect with you or reach out, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I feel like uh, I just want to kind of give a plug for you to check out our website, epiccompaniesnd.com. Uh, we have a lot of exciting projects on there. We do a lot with our news, our media side. You can contact any of our staff members. Uh, for myself, uh, I have a, a LinkedIn profile. Otherwise, uh, my email address, I can have you post that underneath me as well. That's probably the best way. And I'm always uh, open and willing to talk with anyone and just kind of talk through ideas or different things that come up too. I feel like that's a big thing of the PR and communication side is working internally with our team, externally, but also seeking out advice. And I, I'm always willing to learn from others too. I think that's one of the greatest things I've learned is the best ideas usually come from somebody <laughs> else. So... <laughs> So I'm always Thanks. open minded. Excellent. Well, awesome. <laughs> Mackenzie, thank you so much for coming to the show. And for our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you check us out at vimeo.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Pompiglov. Thanks for joining.